Welcome back to 843 TV. Now we're joined by a, a fun guest and a friend of mine, Ms. Heather Rath with Heather Rath Consulting, always having a ton of stuff to talk about. Yes. And on top of that, you just came back from a fabulous trip out west for a couple of yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I took my kids and then my husband uh, later flew out and joined us, but I took my kids through a civil rights tour through the South. And then we went out to Colorado and Wyoming for a couple of weeks. So it was really Wonderful. nice to be out and it's great to be back. Yes, it always is great to come back to our beautiful yes, island. Yes, I know. It's just so it nice is. to be here. It is, and lots to do and lots to talk about. Let's start with the town council. There's some seats up, and this yes. is a very important subject. I think people are more in tune now, especially after these past months watching meetings online. Right. And, and I know I've learned a lot watching meetings online. So tell us about the election coming up. What's going on? Yeah, so November 3rd, we'll have an election for three town council seats. And Ward 1, we have Alex Brown and Peter Christian running. Um, and let's see, in Ward 3, we have um, Tommy Wrights and David Ames running. And then in Ward 6, we have Glenn Sanford and Kent Berry running. So if you live in um, Ward 1, Ward 3, or Ward 6, you really need to um, research these guys, and um, they're all men. and you need to research these guys and uh, and decide who you're going to be voting for. Yes, very important uh, thing to do for sure, especially yes. as we learned the last few months, it's a lot of key decisions have been made that yeah. affect all of us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of all men running, I do want to um, talk about Tom Davis, um, our state senator mm -hmm. uh, for the moment. He just did a great speech on um, the ratification of the ERA. I, I, it's kind of a random topic right now for us to discuss, but around the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote mm, and yes. around um, the fact that we're going into this election cycle, I would encourage everybody to hop on Tom's Facebook page and take a look at his speech because it was pretty powerful. So yeah, I'll do that for sure. Yeah, too. Yeah. Now let's talk about the, uh, of course, COVID-19 yes. testing has been yep. an ongoing discussion and you've yep. been very helpful to us, keeping us informed and very involved in working with, with senators and, and everyone else. So where do we stand now? Yeah, so our COVID testing is going well across the board with our DHEC testing partner um, and also Hilton Head Regional Hospital. I mean, they're, or Hilton Head Regional Medical Center. They're amazing. Um, we have a couple of testing events coming up. Actually, we have okay. one today in at Bluffton High School. And then on the 26th of August, we're uh, north of the Broad at Whale Branch High School. And then September 2nd, we're back here at Hilton Head Island High School. When we first started these large scale testing programs, programs. Um, we had 1,500 people turning yeah. out, 1,000 people turning out. And that sh really showed the need in the market. Um, and it also showed that our numbers were trending upward. Now that we have a lot more testing available, people are feeling more comfortable. Um, we're seeing right around five to 600 people show up at these okay. testing events. And the numbers, as we know, are dropping from our mask um, ordinance, our local mask ordinance, our county mask, um, also, you know, with the social distancing. So, so again, Again, these testing events are there if people want to get tested, if they need to get tested and they don't have access to health insurance and they can't go get tested right away. I do also want to bring up the point, um, because we talked about testing at the last um, 843 TV and I actually got a lot of phone calls about it. If you have access to health insurance, you can call your provider and get a referral and go straight to the drive through at Hilton Head Hospital. I mean, that is a huge asset for our community, but you do need to have that doctor referral. Likewise, in Beaufort, you can go through, I'm sorry, in Bluffton, you can go through the Beaufort um, Memorial Campus and they'll do a self-evaluation on you and then they'll bring you back for testing so you don't need a doctor referral over there. One thing I want to mention on that subject is the Sea Pines uh, Clinic right here. Yeah, they're awesome. My daughter had to do it for school to yeah. move in the dorm and they were incredible. She went on a Friday morning, they called her Sunday on the phone and yeah. told her, negative, great. Yeah, uh, So it, it's another another resource too. Yeah, and again, we're seeing a lot quicker turnaround on the labs. The first go around when we had the 1,500 people showing up, we had the seven to nine window. We're seeing that shortened as you just had the experience yes. with your daughter. Mm -hmm. So all of that is wonderful. And yeah, the private care providers, really these, these um, large scale testing events are meant to reach out to people that wouldn't necessarily have access to testing gotcha. or just wanna drive through and see their status. Sure, gotcha. Information is power. <laughs> Gotcha. Exactly. So good things, good news, yeah. trending downward. You know, people are starting to feel yeah. more comfortable, as you say, but not, yeah. don't don't feel too comfortable and, and not Well, I mean, just keep smart. doing right. what we're doing. We're right. all being super smart, right? Yes. And we're making smart decisions and the masks are working. So we're excited and about that. So 
life can go on. Yeah. Just be a little bit more cautious. So yeah. that's all good. That's good news to my ears. <laughs> that's for sure. And to yeah. many people's also. Let's talk about some other stuff, some fun stuff. Community events, always going on yes. around here. There's oh so much. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I am so excited that um, we're kind of rebirthing community events in a different manner. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you saw last week, but Coastal Discovery Museum did their family fun week that they always do in person at the museum. Instead, they did it all online and it oh. was so <laughs> much fun. It was so cool. So really appreciated that. Um, a couple of, you know, kind of in-person events that are going on. One is um, the Farmer's Market mm -hmm. at Coastal okay. Discovery. And next week, the Heritage Library is going to be do there and they're going to be doing book sales. So if you're interested in the history of Hilton Head Island, or if you're interested in your own personal ancestry research, you can go by the book sale. It's cash only. Um, they're going to be at the Coastal Discovery Museum selling books um, that you can use for your own research at your house. And again, all of that is very safe and open and you're supporting local farmers. And in yeah. this case, uh, the Heritage Library will be there. Uh, another event that's coming up that I love every year. I don't know if you did it last year, the Low Country Paddle Battle. I did not. Oh my gosh, with the Outside Foundation. So it's um, on Skull Creek. It leaves out of Hudson's. It's on September 12th. And you paddle either in a as kayak. As in paddleboard, right? Uh, yep, okay. Yep, yep. okay. As in, as in paddleboard. I did not paddleboard last year. I kayaked. Actually, I don't know if you know uh, Mick Mayers. Um, he's former Hilton Head Fire Rescue. He's now with Outside Hilton Head. He's a kayak guide. Anyways, he and I are friends and we paddled together. That was really fun. But um, the Outside Foundation does a really great job with this event. And um, they bring in some celebrity paddleboard experts and um, world champions. The world champion woman paddleboarder. Her name seashell she'll be here so um i mean there's just really cool people and it's a really great event and again distance we're going to be out on the water yes everything that everything that's all about hilton head island we're going to be you know out on the water enjoying outdoor activities healthy lifestyle all of that fun stuff that's my favorite thing to do for sure and again a blessing that we live here you you can do those things without any problem, right. so that's a great deal. Yes. Let's talk about some inside stuff. The movie theaters, you've been hearing, we've been hearing a lot about Caligny and now mm. the Northwood. What's the latest on the movie theaters? Yeah, so um, movie theaters are reopening at limited capacity. And um, I know at Caligny Theater, one of the things that we're doing down there is we're doing live streaming events. Okay. Um, so, you know, there's gonna be live streaming comedy shows. There's gonna be live streaming events with limited, limited capacity. What's cool about Caligny Theater is that it seats 220. So even with the new laws, we're easily within you know the yeah. capacity oh, of yeah. getting people into the theater and having that theater experience, but also having a live streaming event as well. The first one coming up is uh, late August and they are going to be doing a comedy show live streaming from, I believe it's from LA or New York. But again, um, the the people can people can sit in the theater at yes. this point, which, is, which is nice. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I know, know. right? <laughs> I know. We're so, I think that they're still trying to figure that out. But yeah, I mean, you know, again, all of these things, I think that a lot of us just want to go, uh, you know, have that yeah. kind of theater experience, but of course be safe, of course be distanced. And, and again, we can do that and be masked. Um, you know, another thing that's happening at Coligny is we still have live music on the center stage and that's oh, going great. really well. Jevin Daly is there on Wednesdays and Sundays with his kids show. And again, it's a really great opportunity for the kids to come out, um, to enjoy themselves, um, dance around a little bit. And again, in that nice kiosk area, it's socially distanced. Yes. What other things are going on? Um, let's see. Um, you know, you have the Boys and Girls Club. They mm -hmm. have reopened um, to a limited capacity in terms of being able to um, allow kids to come in and get assistance with their schooling once that school is wonderful. opens I've, up. Mm -hmm. I think that that's one of the a, a yes. really important thing. Absolutely. Um, First Tee is starting up their classes. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're in the same building with them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so First Tee will be starting up their classes uh, in next uh, August 24th. Um, and again, socially distanced and super safe. Um, and, uh, you know, just a really, really great ratio of instructors to children. 
And we know that on the school front, that's going to look a little different, but that's going to happen. Sports is starting back up. So I think it sounds like great news all around, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, Heather, it's always great to talk to you. And you've always got such a cheerful attitude and outlook and always willing to help us. And you can follow Heather on her Facebook page, too. Yeah. Uh, right, of course. Absolutely. And Heather Rath Consulting, get in touch with her. Um, so we are glad to see you today. And we're glad that you all have joined us for this episode of 843 TV, where communities come to speak. Thank you.